The color green brings me so much comfort. That's the cutest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Okay, nowadays, looking at a Fire Emblem Hero screenshot can be pretty rough, but when you look past these sad numbers and the ball of text, you get a nice view. Anyways, I want to talk and mainly gush about the art in Fire Emblem Heroes. Now, I'm not going to cover every character's art and I'll probably miss out on a few bangers, so comment down below some of your favorites. I'd love to hear your thoughts, because the art in this game should be talked about more. Like in Claw, Dorothea, and Annette's Winter Alt, we can see the gifts they plan on giving to their classmates. It's pretty easy to tell by looking at the color scheme and the packaging. Like the slab of meat is obviously Raphael's, the teddy bear is Bernadetta's, and that's... that's my gift. Please subscribe. Thanks. Emblem heroes at the time of this recording are the latest type of characters in the game. Gameplay wise, they're pretty nuts and a pain to deal with, but when you have them, it is what it is, and you also get to see their epic art. Now let's be real, visually, Emblem Heroes are the same thing as the race ones, just with a blue outer glow and some flames. But that doesn't stop them from being cool. I would say that every artist so far has done a beautiful job at translating them from the 3D models to heroes. Like in Engage, the blue aura is pretty subtle, but in Heroes, it's, it's right in your face. Which I find does a great job with displaying how strong they are. And yeah, rightfully so, they're, they're strong alright. Emblem Marth looks amazing. His base art is probably my favorite. He's just so clean and elegant, holding his cape with grace. Also, one funny thing is that in Engage, emblems don't have a physical body, meaning that they can't be touched. But in Heroes, it's a bit different. They can be touched and damaged. So this damage art is his first time getting hurt ever, and honestly, he's stacking it like a champ. Emblem Ike is the second emblem hero we got, and unlike Marth, he gets four unique artworks, which is always appreciated. For the majority of the time, characters only get three unique poses, with the special one being a slight edit of the attack one. So it's always nice when you get four separate poses. I dig the perspective given to Ike's action poses, and his damage art is pretty badass with him standing his ground despite all the damage he's taken. Understandable since he's probably gonna heal himself up anyways. Emblem Selica is the next one, and her aura is way more intense than Ike and Marth, which makes sense considering the firepower she's got. I like how every artist has a different approach to drawing the blue aura. Selica straight up looks like a Dragon Ball character with that special art. Also, her base art is a neat reference to the pose she makes in Gage. Even Marth, kind of. Now if you're tired of all the blue aura you've been seeing, don't worry, I'll mix it up. Fallen heroes kind of suffer a bit like Emblem Heroes, where it's usually a character with purple flames and a sad, emotionless, or angry expression added to them. But that doesn't make their art bad. In fact, the different personalities and aura gives a cinematic and emotional feel to the art. My favorite is without a doubt Fallen Male Corrin. Argon did an amazing job portraying the beast inside him during Chapter 5 of Fates. He looks so feral and savage, it's amazing. Even in his damage art, he still wants to smoke. I love how you can still picture the battle through that art. The posing, the fluidity, and the movement, it's peak. Fallen Harden was one of the first Fallen heroes in the game, and his art still stands amongst the greatest after all these years. I love how each of his art has him looking down on whoever he's facing, even his damaged one. Also that special art is just so powerful, you can feel the weight of the attack through the screen. Fallen Burkut is next, and although he hasn't aged well gameplay wise, he is still a memorable character because of his art. Look at his expression, he's lost it. And seeing Renea alongside him in his base and special art, wow. Definitely one of the most popular choices when asking others about their favorite art in the game. Fallen Ike is another banger, and um, seeing a cipher art being referenced in Fate is sick, and it opened up the possibility of Fallen Crom being in the game. Which yep, it did happen and he also has sick art and a useful weapon. Anyways, although all of his art slaps, his base one deserves some praise. Seeing Ike smiling like that is unsettling. And I love how the shadowy aura only comes from one hand. The one that most likely touched the medallion, causing him to go berserk. Fallen Rhea is next, and in this alt, she's unable to control her draconic power. I like this artwork because it depicts Rhea losing control in her humanoid form. In three houses, all you see is her transformation, not the in-between. But thanks to heroes, you get to see her dragon veins, her blank stare showing her lost control, and her powering up. It's neat. Fallen Byleth is one of the unique Fallen skins. As you can see, she has a green aura due to being possessed by Sophus. And you can see that just by looking at the way she's standing in her base art. Like wow, they made an emotionless character look even more emotionless. It's insane. Also, having her drawn by Hidari is sick. 
Okay, I don't want to spend too much time with the Fallen heroes, so I'll do a quick lightning round. First, Fallen Dimitri's special art. It gives me the same vibes as male Corrin. Pure savageness and a hunger for battle. Fallen Lumera is great. The change of lighting on her attacking poses makes her look so unnerving. It's great. Got a shout out Fallen Krom, another Cypher art reference. Seeing the Fell Dragon symbol is also nice, and I really like the movement in his damage art. Lastly, I love how Fallen Ananko stands out from the other Fallen characters with his watery aura. Makes sense since, you know, that's water's his whole thing. Now, there are other cool Fallen alts, but hey, that's the gist of it. Up next are legendary heroes. As their name implies, they have epic looking art. A popular pick when discussing the art in the game is Legendary Seliph, and he deserves it. Bro looks majestic. He visually embodies that legendary feel, and Tearfing shining gold is beautiful. Not only that, he gets 4 unique poses. Well deserved. Now the same can be said about his father, Sigurd. Gorgeous art and 4 poses as well, we love to see it. His special art is one of the best in the game. I love the movement, his expression, and the special effects. Suzuki Rika just does not miss. Someone else who doesn't miss is Hakan. So sorry if I'm butchering the name. In any case, legendary Micaiah also gets 4 unique poses. I really love her outfit and the coloring, and that posing on a special art is perfect. Now, legendary Adelar doesn't get 4 poses, but her art still delivers. If I had to describe it in one word, it would be cinematic. Again, the coloring is immaculate. Hakan made that red armor look so good. That's worthy of an emperor. Next up is one of my personal favorites, legendary male Byleth. His art is gorgeous. I was never keen on the Electing One's outfit, but Hagia Kaoru made it work. The details on the clothes and armor are amazing. I love the gauntlet on his right arm, and I love his expression. Everything is great, really. Legendary Robin was mainly known for his insane stat swings back then, but don't forget how hard his art goes. I love the light coming out of his tome and the way his Elwind is positioned. In his special art, his weapon pops up and his finger is pointing upwards. He is hyped, and he knows he's changing the tides of the battle. I love it. Of course, can't forget about the damage art, it's one of the best in the game. Despite receiving heavy damage, the man is still ready to go, and having his magic take the form of a sphere is sick. Other legendary hero arts that I want to mention are Hector's special art, his expression, stance, and lightning effects here are top notch, Julia's special with her light dragon is cool, and lastly, Ephraim's damage art is amazing. We love a confident king. Speaking of confident kings, we must talk about Medius. Look at that pose, even at low health, he's menacing. His attack art is also insane with the details of the energy particles and the crown, and the shadow dragon on his special art is a nice touch that flows so well with the pose. That's for sure some final boss energy. And everything I just said can be applied to Formortis as well. Like look at that. Daisuke is a goat. If it weren't for that hole in his wing and that broken horn, I wouldn't even know that this was supposed to be his damage art. He is looking down on you still. The same can be said with his neutral pose. He's like a Jojo character menacingly walking up to you. And having the attack art be a wind up, then the special be the swing, fire. Art wise, it's no surprise that Formortis got all the spotlight on his debut, but Goto deserves some love too. This old man is locked in in every single pose, except his special because now he's popping off. I love the magic effects on the special, there's so much variety, which makes sense since he is the White Sage. Dagger is another favorite of mine, she is going in on that special art. Her pose alongside the flow of her cape and swing makes for a very great shot. It also looks like she's balling. Got him! That's a child! I mean, it's alright, like... I don't know... It was perfect. Perfect. That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! One of, if not the main feature of the Fate Pass, is the Resplendent Heroes. It gives new life to characters by giving them stat boost and a fresh new coat of paint. Now, not every art is perfect, but I'm gonna cover some of my favorites. The first one I had to mention is Brave Lucina. This art style is so different from the many heroes we have in the game. She looks more mature and badass here, which is something we don't see too often in her other arts. Krom was definitely in need of a resplendent alt. He feels more powerful now, and he got his huge muscles back. His attack art is incredible, I love how the cape faces the same way as Falchion. Having black feathers for a special art is also nice, and that lava arm is pretty badass. Eldekin has one of the best, if not the best, resplendent artwork in the game. The vibe he gives off in this art is so intimidating, it's amazing. His expression, his pose, his attire, the colors, it's all breathtaking. Definitely one of my favorite pieces by Rika Suzuki. Another resplendent I love from her is Ishtar. She looks stunning and the attack pose is pretty cool. 
The way the lightning effect is drawn reminds me of Zenitsu's Thunder Breeding, which is a plus for me. Amelia is a character that I don't care about too much, but when I saw her splendid, I had to take a second look. The best part of her art is the perspective. It's one we don't see a lot in the game, and it gives weight to her swing. The large chain also adds to the heavy might of her weapon, which is great. Odin is next, and the pose in each of his art is top notch. It matches his goofy personality while still looking badass. He is another contender for having the best resplendent art in the game, and his damage art is a nice reference to his original art in Fates. Sigurd too deserves praise for his resplendent attire. I love the light and dark contrast between his weapon and his hell attire. That damage art is nice, as we see him still pointing his blade towards his opponent, refusing to give up. It's tough. Other resplendents I like are Sanaki's special one because I find magic circles cool, Roy's everything, I love the painting aesthetic and the damage pose, it looks like one of his taunts in Smash. Julia's resplendent has a gorgeous special with her usual light dragon, Ranku's special also goes hard, Surtur looks menacing in each of his art, his special and damage ones are perfect, and then there's Brave Roy who looks like he's about to do Ike's forward aerial, but then his special art shows that he's actually swinging his blade upwards. It's still wild to me that Intelligent System chose to give resplendent skins to the winners of Chusha Legends since their outfits usually carry significance and when they advertise the event, the main thing mentioned is a character wearing special outfits. Anyway, some of my favorite Chusha Legend arts are Brave Alm. I'm a big fan of the attack art as we get a view of him from above. Again, it's another perspective we don't usually see in the game. I also like how in his special art, the red jewel of his Draco Falchion glows alongside the blade. It sets him apart from the other Falchion users. Brave Gatekeeper is another one that deserves praise. You can't have Gatekeeper without his gate. Having a whole background is insane. Look at the details on the ground and the gate. And he even gets a dog and two cats that fight alongside him. This cat especially wants all the smoke. His special art is also unique where he gives up his lance to instead call other soldiers. And lastly on his damage art, the cat that wanted all the smoke is still by his side. Brave Violet is my favorite Treasure Legends art. She looks radiant and stunning. It's great. Solzius is definitely proud of Violet slaying in that outfit. I like how in each of her artworks, her light magic is always there, adding more to the holy vibe of the art. Having the Crest of Flames in her special art is also a great touch, and seeing an emotionless character now smile is just perfect. Okay, I did not think that talking about character artworks would take this much time, and uh, I still have other heroes I want to talk about, but I think I'll just leave that for a part 2 video. Now, that still wouldn't be enough to cover all the great pieces in the game, so... I asked some of my viewers in a post about their personal favorites. Heath Head says Shannon's damage art goes hard and Resplendent Amelia is amazing. Yep, true. Seeing him get pushed back is pretty immersive. More damage art should do that. They also mentioned Tefish's art being great, which I also agree. Maria talks about Fallen Violet and Hidari. Yes, sir. Enemy, thank you for the kind words. Likes Duo Peony, Halloween Female Coin, and anything Yoshiku. Amazing picks. Ren's favorite art is hardened and goes into great detail about how Daisuke Izuka is the GOAT. He's right and I couldn't have said it any better. Birds came flying, I like your username by the way, likes Brave Alm, Ascended Air, and Ascended Idun. Great picks as well. Swordmaster mentions Legendary Erika, Resplendent Seth, Duo Alm, as well as Resplendent Lucina and Salif, and Legendary Julia Special. A lot of bangers and you're right about Julia. The Curse One says Halloween Sakura, Fallen Burkut, and Gatekeeper. We think alike, you and I. Violet's Boba mentions Fallen Orson, Ascended Elencia, Mycin, so much more but doesn't mention Violet. Hmm, great picks nonetheless. Fight of Hormones and Tool each give a hefty analysis that deserves to be read so I'll link it in the description but if I had to sum it up, Fight of Hormones likes Esuel, Hakan, and Kozaki, while Tool likes Teta and Kaya 8. And lastly, GP says this. I agree.